everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. This week I am featuring the Fond of Autumn bundle from the 2022 Stampin' Up! Holiday mini catalog. Um, this image is gorgeous. Uh, we're going to color it with blends and I put some blues behind it because I love the way oranges pop when there is a blue uh, background. So that's what we're going to do. All right, let's get started with our coloring. I have found that this image uh, does best with the Stamparatus. I love using my Stamparatus to stamp larger images. And you'll notice that my stamp is stained black. That's because I've used it with Stazon. Stazon is a different um, ink. It'll stain your photopolymer stamps, but it doesn't do anything to them other than uh, leave a stain and there are some ways to get that off but that's why mine looks like that right now we're not using stays on we're using memento when you color with stamp and blends here are the ones we're going to use um you have to use memento stays on if you try to use stays on it will muddy up your colors and it won't look good at all all right so i'm just going to stamp this on basic white cardstock in memento black and you wanna really push it down all over the place and lift it up. Perfect. Now, if you have missed a spot, you know, there's a spot that maybe didn't stamp very well, you can lay your um, stamp, you can ink it up and lay it right back down again, and it'll be in the exact right position for you um, to add that ink that you need. All right, let's start with our flowers. We're gonna start with light pumpkin pie. I'm going for fall colors, um, of course. So we're gonna do pumpkin pie light on this one. And then I'm gonna add in some dark, kind of give it a little bit of um, shadowing there. Um, I'm also going to try to get in between. There's some little dots there that I want to fill that color in. All right, now I'm going to switch to um, Pale Papaya, which is a lighter orange. And again, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to fill that in with light color, the light Pale Papaya. <coughs> excuse me. Actually, I did that backwards, didn't I? I use the dark pale papaya. <clears throat> so let's take the light pumpkin pie and add in some contrast. All right, this time let's do pale papaya over here. There we go, that's light pale papaya. I was thinking that looked pretty dark. All right, add in your dark colors and I'm just adding it in kind of where those lines are around the center mostly um it'll your flower would be lighter out on the edges okay now we've got a lot of leaves i'm going to do most of them in old olive and i'm just going to use um my light old olive to color them in And then we'll add in that contrast with the dark. Stampin' Blends are so great for uh, coloring because the colors blend, as the name tells you, and you won't have any streaky marker lines. Um, they're also great for adding contrast, like shadowing. All right, for this larger leaf, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, of course, you can do your leaves any colors that you want. But I'm just gonna stick with green. All right, now let's take that dark. And this time I'm gonna just follow that line in the middle, those veining lines. I'm gonna add dark to that. And then I'm gonna take my light and just kind of fan that color out towards the edges. Okay. 
All right, now I'm gonna switch to Granny Apple Green, and we'll do some of these in a lighter green. Let's see, yeah, make sure I've got light. You can um, color multiple things at once and then add your sh shadowing, but these markers will dry pretty quick. So you want to just do little bits at a time, little sections at a time. Otherwise, when you come back to add in those darker colors, the, the uh, blending isn't gonna work as well. All right, now I'm gonna color the rest of the leaves, interchanging these two colors and then we'll come back and finish up. Look at how far we travel. Look at how much we All right, we're done with our leaves. So now let's add our little berries. I'm going to use Calypso Coral for these. They're easy. I'm just going to use Calypso Coral Dark to color them all in. Let's see, did I miss any? Nope. All right, now for our acorns, I'm gonna take my crumb cake light and color the bottoms. That looks like dark, doesn't it? Well, I do have two dark crumb cakes. I'm not sure how that happened, but that's okay. We'll use dark crumb cake on the bottom and we'll use light soft suede on the top or maybe dark soft suede so it'll be more contrast um let's see that's light and this is dark so i'm just going to carefully color in the tops of these now see these little swirls here next to um the acorns i left mine i didn't color them but i have noticed other people adding color to those and i think it's beautiful so if you want to add in some color you can take it and just trace that in there um okay for the centers of our flowers that's all we have left i'm just going to use saffron kind of get those little dots there too all right, there we go, beautiful. Now, one thing I wanna add is some Wink of Stella. I think it just adds so much to this image when you add a little bit of sparkle to it. Wink of Stella is your easy button for sparkle. Doesn't make a mess and it's lovely. All right, now we're gonna cut that out in a second, but we've got some other things to do before we bring over the cut and emboss machine. Um, the first thing we're going to do is make our background. I have a piece of crumb cake cardstock, just a quarter piece of uh, crumb cake. And then I've got these strips of different blues. Um, this actually is a bluish purple, and this is one inch wide. I made them longer than my piece. Um, it won't matter. I usually like to trim them off, but we're going to actually cut this out with a stitched rectangle. The next one is a one and a fourth inch piece of, uh, this was, did I tell you? I did not. Orchid Oasis, <laughs> this is Starry Sky. And last, this is Night of Navy. All right, so now we're gonna take our stitched rectangle and cut that out like that. All right, so we're gonna do that. We also need to stamp our sentiment. And we're gonna do that in um, Early Espresso. We're gonna do the banner. Now, notice the banner has these little dots here. At first I thought maybe my stamp didn't stamp right, but I looked and the artist actually drew those in. Um, it's like a hand-drawn banner. So don't think that your stamp is messed up. It's supposed to be like that. All right, sending many thanks right there in the middle. And you can use your Stamparatus to line that up too if you're worried about that. And we'll cut that out with our matching die. Now our flowers have multiple choices, okay? And I will tell you that when I made this card, um, it was the first time I'd used this set. And the die that I used actually cuts it into three sections. Um, so you'll see 
um, this die right here will cut out, all, well, actually four separate sections. I didn't mean to do that, but I actually was happy that it happened because um, the way that it fit onto the card was better. If you want to keep it intact, you'll use this other die like that. All right, so let's cut everything out and then we'll put our card together. Bring over your cut and embossed machine. And let's do our flower first. The dies that Stampin' Up! creates, whoops, are so clever. I feel like sometimes when you look at a set of dies in a catalog, you don't always see um, the clever, you know, surprises that they have designed within the dies. And this is one of those to give us options of cutting these apart, using them in multiple ways instead of having to do that with our scissors. But then also giving us the option of keeping it as one full piece is also great. All right, now for our banner. And last but not least, our rectangle. And I'm gonna move it over so that I have more crumb cake than I have of than I have the um, orchid oasis. I just wanted a little kind of a skinny strip of that. Now the stitched rectangles are a little bit intricate, so run it through a couple of times, flip it over, make sure you've got a good cut, and we do. And then we'll just take that out, and there we have our piece. All right, now let's bring over all of our pieces. We've got this, we've got our card base. All right, so now we're gonna take these pieces and add them with dimensionals. I'm gonna start with this piece in the center. We're gonna do it like, let me look at my sample. We're gonna do it like that. No, 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 we're gonna do it like that, okay? And then we'll add our other piece, our flowers, overlapping a bit like that. And then we've got our multiple berries. We're gonna take our larger one and stick it down here like that. And we'll take our smaller one and put up here like that. All right, now you wanna put on your banner and I think our regular dimensionals will fit here. Okay, sending many thanks. Uh, let's go the other way, sending many thanks like that. And then we'll put some dimensionals on the back. and put that on our crumb cake card base. Last but not least, I'm gonna add some iridescent uh, rhinestones, just a few. And we'll put one up here. And there we are, a beautiful fall card with that bright blue background. Reminds me of the blue skies we have in the fall sometimes, those bluebird, bright, beautiful skies. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Please visit my blog. There's a free PDF there for you. Um, and I have two other Fond of Autumn projects on that blog post as well. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.